Well, time for some more of Monty Python star Terry Jones's fantastical fairy tales. Read today by DJ Hugh Stevens and actress Eve Miles. The Wooden City There was once a poor king. He had a threadbare robe and patches on his throne. The reason he was poor was that he gave away all his money to whoever needed it, for he cared for his people as if each of them was his own child. One day, however, a wizard came to the city while the king was away. The wizard summoned all the people into the main square and said to them, Make me your king, and you shall have all the gold and silver you ever wanted. Now the townsfolk talked amongst themselves and said, While it is certainly true that there are no beggars in this kingdom, it is also true that none of us are very rich nor expect to be as long as our present king reigns. So at length they agreed that the wizard should become their king. And will you obey my laws, whatever I decree? cried the wizard. If we can have all the gold and silver we ever wanted, they replied, you may make what laws you wish. Whereupon the wizard climbed to the top of the tallest tower in the city and took a live dove and tore out its feathers and dropped them one by one out of the tower, chanting, Gold and silver shall be yours and blocks of wood shall serve my law. Now that poor dove had as many feathers on its back as there were people in that city. And by the time the wizard had finished, everyone in the city had been turned to wood. When the king arrived back, instead of cheering crowds, he found only wooden people, each standing where there had been when the wizard cast his spell. Outside the inn was a wooden innkeeper pouring some beer from a jug into the cup of a wooden old man. Wooden women walking wooden children down the street, and at the fish shop, a wooden fishmonger stood by a slab of rotten fish. And when the king entered his palace, he even found his own wife and children turned to wood. Filled with despair, he sat down on the floor and wept. Whereupon the wizard appeared and said to the king, Will you become my slave if I bring your people back to life? And the king answered, Nothing would be too much to ask. I would become your slave. So the wizard set to work. He ordered a quantity of the finest wood and took the most delicate tools with golden screws and silver pins, and he made a little wooden heart that beat and pumped for everyone in that city. Then he placed one heart inside each of the wooden citizens and set it working. One by one, each citizen opened its wooden eyes and looked stiffly around, while its wooden heart beat. Tuck -a -tuck -a -tuck. Then each wooden citizen moved a wooden leg and a wooden arm, and then one by one they started to go about their business as before, except stiffly and awkwardly, for they were still made of wood. Then the wizard appeared before the king and said, Now you are my slave. But, cried the king, my people are still made of wood. You have not truly brought them back to life. He left life for to work for me. And he ordered the wooden army to throw the king out of the city and bolt the gates. The king wandered through the world begging for his food and seeking someone who could bring his subjects back to life, but he could find no one. In despair, he took work as a shepherd minding sheep on a hill that overlooked the city. And there he would often stop travellers as they passed to and fro and ask them how it was in the great city. It's fine, they would reply. The citizens make wonderful clocks and magnificent clothes woven out of precious metals, and they sell these things cheaper than anywhere else on earth. One night, the king, determined to see how things were for himself, crept down to the walls and climbed in through a secret window and went to the main square. There, an extraordinary sight met his eyes. Although it was the dead of night, 
Every one of those wooden citizens was working as if it had been broad daylight. None of them spoke a word, and the only sound was the takka 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 of their wooden hearts beating in their wooden chests. The king ran from one to the other, saying, Don't you remember me? I am your king! But they all just stared at him blankly and hurried on their way. At length, the king saw his own daughter coming down the street, carrying a load of firewood for the wizard's fire. He caught hold of her and lifted her up and said, Daughter, don't you remember me? Don't, don't you remember? You're a princess. But his daughter looked at him and said, I remember nothing, but I have gold and silver in my purse. So the king leapt onto a box in the main square and cried out, You are all under the wizard's spell. Help me seize him and cast him out. But they all turned with blank faces and replied, We have all the gold and silver we ever wanted. Why should we do anything? Just then the wizard himself appeared on the steps of the palace, arrayed in a magnificent robe of gold and silver and carrying a flaming torch. Aha! Uh -huh, he cried. So you thought you'd undo my work, did you? Very well. And he raised his hands to cast a spell upon the king. But before he could utter a single word, the king seized the bundle of firewood that his daughter was carrying and hurled it at the wizard. At once the flame from the wizard's torch caught the wood, and the blazing pieces fell down around him in a circle of fire that swallowed him up. And as the fire raged, the spell began to lift. The king's daughter and all the others shivered, and the takka 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 of their wooden hearts changed to real heartbeats, and they each turned back into flesh and blood. And when he looked where the wizard had been, there in his place they found a molten heap of twisted gold and silver. This the king raised up on a pedestal in the main square, and underneath he had written the words, Whoever needs gold or silver may take from here. But you know, not one of those townsfolk ever took a single scrap of it as long as they lived. I wonder if it's still there.